United Nations Security Council meets in New York to take emergency action for ending violence in the newly independent Republic of the Congo. For several hours, Soviet stalling efforts delay all attempts to set up a UN peace force. Amendments to condemn Belgian aggression and to limit the force to African troops are submitted by Soviet representative Arkady Sobolov. His provocative remarks and diversionary tactics finally draw this statement from United States Ambassador Henry Cabot Lodge. Now, any man of good will knows that this is a time for reason and for constructive action. This is a moment which is putting the United Nations on trial. This is not a time for provocative and reckless charges. And it's regrettable that the Soviet government should have interjected itself into the situation with the the truly incendiary statement which Mr. Sobolev has just read. It has made totally unfounded allegations. For example, that the United States government has undertaken measures, and I'm quoting, directed at undermining the sovereignty and liquidation of the independence of the Republic of the Congo. But everyone here knows that nothing could be further from the truth, and I'm sure the men who wrote this statement know it too. Six and a half hours after the start of the night session, a vote on the resolution is finally reached. By eight votes to none, with three abstentions, the Security Council authorizes Secretary General Hammarskjöld to organize a peace force to bring order to the Congo.